Review cop stories with Happy Endings USA here. Let's get into it. Skip it up and that up. I don't know about any of you guys, but it, it's so funny when you go into a GameStop and you could tell two things. When someone's trading in a console because they stole it and just want to make a quick buck off of it. Or if they're selling the console for drug money, weed money, whatever the case may be. <laughs> How many times I've, I've been in GameStops throughout the years, and you could just tell. You could tell by the person's demeanor. You could tell by how they're acting. Yes, I'm speculating, and maybe they're just on being honest, good citizens and just trading in those consoles, and they didn't steal them, and they're not looking for drug money. But the telltale sign is, and you guys know GameStop, especially if you're from the States, that there's a big discrepancy in how much money you get, whether you get trade in credit, usually you get a lot more with trade in credit, or if you want to get cash back. If you want to get cash back, like say for example, oh, if you trade in this Xbox whatever, you'll get a hundred bucks store credit. If you want cash, you'll get $25. A telltale sign that someone either stole the console or is looking for drugs, drug money is if they take the cash. Because any person who is truly a gamer wouldn't in their right mind only take $25 when they could get $100 plus dollars in store credit. And I've seen it bad throughout the years. I remember this one time there was a three, this is back like in the, when the 360 was really in its prime, like 07, 08. And there was this guy and you could just, he was like tweaking. Like he smelled, he smelled like cigarettes and something else, like some other drug. And I couldn't put my mind, my, my head around it, what it was, but he smelt off. Okay. It wasn't body odor. It was something else. And he was kind of tweaking like this. And, and I don't even know why I'm telling this story, but it's still funny to tell. And you could just see like, I don't remember the exact price. Christ, we're going back to like 07, 08, like I said. And the, the store clerk was like, at GameStop, was like, you'll get an insane amount of store credit or a decent amount of store credit. Or you'll get $5 for a Subway sandwich if you actually get cash back. And he was like, I'll take the cash, I'll take the cash, I'll take the cash. And it's like, why would you do that? Why would you do Unless you absolutely really needed the cash or you didn't own the console. Now, I know GameStop throughout the years has put uh, safeguards in place so people, it's tougher for people to sell stolen consoles, but it was more of a thing back in the day and you could always tell when someone was up to no good. Well, why the hell am I talking about stolen consoles? Well, in France, in Paris, Paris police recovered stolen game consoles. And I believe it's the same in the States. If I'm wrong you know, just, you know, expose me in the comments section. But when they're stolen goods and they can't find the owners of the stolen goods with electronics or whatever the case may be, they destroy them. And the reason why they do that is because it curtails corruption because let's cops are human. I am human. And if there is a bunch of expensive electronics laying around that are unaccounted for and you can't find the owners, someone may be like, oh, look at this PlayStation 4 Pro, this white PlayStation 4 Pro. I'm gonna make it. Dis I'm gonna make it disappear. I'm, I'm gonna make sure it, it, it goes away. Don't worry. I'll, I'll make. I'll, I'll. I'll give. It's in good hands. And then it'll go in some cop's car. And again, that's not a shot of cops. Humans do that. <laughs> you know. And if you destroy the consoles, if you can't find the right owner, it, that means that no one can steal the stuff. No law, cop could steal the stuff. It's just how it is. Well, the Paris police decided to do something else. Well, instead of destroying the consoles because they don't want, you know, cops to feel tempted by them, they were like, hmm, let's do something good with them. Let's donate these consoles to a good cause. So the Paris police took this unspecified amount of game consoles, I, I, I bet it's a decent amount of them, to the, because I cannot say this right for the life of me because I am not French, uh, the Center Hospitalier Sud Francilien, or the CHSF, a hospital in Corbel Essons. I'm probably screwed that up royally, but <laughs> there that, that that's what they, they took it to that hospital for the sick children there, and that's absolutely amazing. Now that hospital is located in a suburb of southern Paris, and the Paris cops are like, you know what, this would be a good early Christmas present for the kids there, you know, especially if they have some kind of terminal illness or they're going through chemotherapy or anything like that. It's a great way to get their mind off of what they're going through. Now, a spokesman from the hospital had to say this about getting the consoles donated. It means a lot for them, the consoles, to stay here. It's also a way to distract them, the children, during a painful time. 
It's a well-known analgesic method. I love, again, just like when I reported when the cops went to a noise complaint where people were cheering and yelling while playing Smash Brothers and the cops ended up playing <laughs> with the people that had the cops called on them. I love reporting news stories about like this when it comes to law enforcement because I have a confession which is probably going to give me some crap, but I used to have a very negative outlook on law enforcement myself, even as of like seven or eight years ago. I... I assumed because most of the stories that you hear um, in the news about law enforcement are negative that most cops are not good. I'll put it that way. And I just assumed that every cop was corrupt and bad. And I learned from personal experience that that's not true. And yeah, here what we have to realize is this. If the reason why more negative stories about cops or just politicians or whatever in general the reason why there's more negativity out there because for some reason we're inclined to tune in more when there's tragedy it's some human nature thing deep in our brains it's kind of why why rubbernecking exists when there's an accident on the side of the road we want to see tragedy i don't know why it is it's also why reality shows are very popular because people love to watch other people rip each other's heads off if everyone was happy and getting along on a reality show no one would tune in and watch it. But the problem is, whether it be YouTubers or news outlets or legacy media constantly focusing on negativity is that their audience begins to think that everything about a said group of people is only negative. And I, I see that with law enforcement, especially in the States. Now, is there issues with law enforcement in the States? Absolutely, there is issues, okay? And I, I feel like cops are trained to be too afraid. I understand why they need to be in a lot of cases, but whatever let's let, let let's push it over to the side for now the way these news stories portray law enforcement people start to think oh all cops are that way you know it's it's stereotypes it's stereotypes are there's stereotypes with races there's stereotypes with body types there's stereotypes with genders there's stereotypes with religion there's stereotypes with sexual preferences everyone and and those are honestly accelerated in, in media, again, whether it be YouTubers or news outlets or whatever the case may be. And it's not good because a lot of times the stereotypes are not true. And the same goes again for law enforcement. We need to stop thinking that every cop is a bad guy because that is absolutely not the case. And stories like this that usually get overlooked are proof of that. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Hey, congratulations. If you made it to the end of the video, you should subscribe to Review Tech USA so you can hear me blabber on some more. Also, too, starting this month, I will be live streaming solely on Twitch. I'll have a link to my Twitch channel below in the description. And last but not least, make sure you click that like button. It helps out the show big time. See you guys in the next video.